is uh, pulling out of the floor competition also, in addition to the uh, uneven bars and the vault competition. So we'll discuss that. And we want to welcome everybody on our social media platforms to the African History Network show. It's Sunday, August 1st, 2021, and we are live. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. Um, Simone Biles has had to pull out of the floor competition. U.S. Gymnastics uh, superstar Simone Biles uh, had to withdraw from the final floor event. U.S. USA Gymnastics said on Sunday that leaves Biles only one event left to possibly compete in the balance beam contest on Tuesday, the balance beam contest on Tuesday. We know she's focusing in on her mental health. Mental health is extremely important. We're going to give you an update on that. A couple of days ago, she said that she was uh, basically suffering from the twisties. OK, and we have a uh, clip from the Today Show that deals with what the twisties are. It's very, very uh, serious. And it deals with uh, when a gymnast. When uh, a gymnast does not know uh, where they are space space wise when they're in the air and it can be something that's deadly. You can break your neck, paralyze yourself. Um, this is different than uh, a basketball player. This is different than a football player, even though football is dangerous. Um, this is extremely dangerous. OK, so we'll give you an update on what's going on with Simone Biles. Um and we'll talk about what are the twisties as well. Uh, also, other gymnasts have been weighing in to defend Simone Biles. Other gymnasts have been weighing in to defend Simone Biles. And I know uh, Dominique Dawes, um, um, Olympian Dominique Dawes, who was the first uh, African-American to win a gold medal for gymnastics male or female she's weighed in and and basically said that um you know what simone is suffering from is serious and how things are different today because you have social media and people can weigh in on social media attack you through social media as well but she said uh, dominique Dahl said she was happy that um someone like a simone biles can put her mental health um above performing so we'll discuss that then uh, attorney Benjamin Crump, you know, Friday, we talked about how attorney Benjamin Crump is suing uh, pharmaceutical companies on behalf of the family of Henrietta Lacks, on behalf of the family of Henrietta Lacks. And Henrietta Lacks was an African-American woman who died of cervical cancer at 30, 31 years old. And she was a poor tobacco farmer from Virginia. And uh, uh, part of her uh, sales were used for different um, breakthroughs, different um, um, uh, medical breakthroughs, uh, developing the polio vaccine, in vitro fertilization, et cetera. Well, uh, attorney Benjamin Crump is also filing a lawsuit on behalf of African-American women. And this is huge. Have you heard about this? Attorney Benjamin Crump is filing a lawsuit against Johnson and Johnson on behalf of black women over uh, powder causing cancer over Johnson and Johnson uh, baby powder. OK, have you heard about this? Um, he spoke to the grill dot com. CBS News has an article about this, as well as ABC News. Benjamin Crump is filing the uh, lawsuit on behalf of the National Council of Negro Women, on behalf of the National National Council of Negro Women, alleging that uh, Johnson & Johnson targeted sales of talcum powder products to black women knowing concerns that it could cause ovarian cancer, knowing concerns that it could cause ovarian cancer. OK, we're going to talk about this. And also Candace Kelly, my friend Candace Kelly, um, who's a uh, legal correspondent on uh, the Black News Channel, discussed this as well. We're on uh, sometimes with panelists on Roland Martin and Filter together. But uh, Candace Kelly discussed this uh, also. So we're going to share that uh, story with you. 
Benjamin Crump files Johnson and Johnson lawsuit on behalf of black women over powder causing cancer. And one of the things that they're one of the things that they're saying in this lawsuit is that um, Johnson and Johnson targeted African-American women and targeted overweight African-American women as well uh, for uh, baby powder usage. So we'll discuss that. That's uh, serious. Uh, we'll discuss that. And then um, the I've been talking about this four day march, this 27 mile four day march uh, across Texas that has been taking place, uh, led by Reverend William Barber III and um, uh, Beto O'Rourke out of Texas. The march has concluded. Roland Martin was down in Texas broadcasting live and uh, interviewing people. We talked about this on Roland Martin Unfiltered on Friday. OK, so we're going to discuss some of that um, as well. Uh, we'll play a, a, a excerpt because we discussed that on the panel. And this is fighting for voting rights. This is fighting for the For the People Act. Um, and, you know, this is a this is a serious fight. Willie uh, Willie Nelson was there on Saturday performing. And one of the things that uh, we asked on on the show Friday on Roller Martin Unfiltered Friday, one of the things that we asked is where are the rest of the celebrities uh, when you had the killing of George Floyd uh, in uh, May of 2020, and then you had the protests out in the streets. You had all the people, you had celebrities commenting on it, things like this. But celebrities have largely been silent um, when it comes to this attack on voting rights. Celebrities have lar largely been silent. OK, so we're going to uh, we're going to discuss that as well. OK, so on the African History Network show, we focus on educating, empowering and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world, because right now this correct wrong behavior. What you do for yourself, what you do to yourself and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you haven't taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard and seen about yourself. So when you control the radius of a man or woman's thoughts, you can control the comforts of his or her actions because the mind can't do or teach what it doesn't know. Now, we deal with a number of different topics here on the African History Network show. We deal with current events and politics and uh, history, economic empowerment, entrepreneurship, relationships, love, sex, health issues, and much, much more. Sign up for our email newsletter. Text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, the 22828. The sign up for our email newsletter. Text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, the 22828. The sign up for our email newsletter. Also visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. You can sign up for the email newsletter there as well. Uh, I taught my uh, online course this weekend, well, two, two, cl uh, two classes. Um, from the Civil War to the Black Power move, from the from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, uh, 1865 to 1968. That's a fantastic class. You can still register for this 10-week online course, where we go through each class and analyze a 10-year period of history and look at what happened after um, slavery ended. We look at the Reconstruction era. We look at advancements African Americans were making and 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 how these advancements were being reversed and also the attack on voting rights. And we see the attack on voting rights in the 18, 1868 with the Opelousa massacre of 1868. We see it in 1870. We see it in 1876 with the Texas State Constitution of 1876. We see this attack throughout history and we see the Jim Crow laws instituted in the poll taxes and the literacy test which is why you needed a Voting Rights Act in 1965. That's why you needed the Voting Rights Act in 1965. And all this is, uh, we see these uh, Jim Crow 2.0 tactics being used today in, in Georgia and Texas, especially these former Confederate states, okay? So we're dealing with a lot of these same fights all over again. So uh, one of the concepts we really don't understand is protecting gains that were made. We don't understand the concept of protecting gains that were made because people are always trying to take things away from you. People are always trying to take you back. 
All right. So um, we'll talk about that as well. Uh, if you want to support the African History Network, you can do so. Uh, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. This helps us keep um, broadcasting, keep doing the research, keep uh, broadcasting six days a week, pay some of the bills, etc. All right. And also visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. This is our official cash app account, dollar sign, the AHN show, S-H-O-W. And it has shows my name there, Michael, and shows my picture as well. These other ones are fake African History Network cash app accounts. Okay, so we're coming up here on a break. Calling numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call-in number. If you have a question or comment, 313-778-7600. When we come back from the break, we'll go to uh, the story dinner with Simone Biles pulling out of uh, the latest competition, which is the floor competition. And we'll talk about what are the twisties and uh, what's going on with Simone Biles, who is the greatest of all time. Don't be mistaken. She is the greatest of all time. Listen to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, the future radio. I'm your host, brother Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Black on Purpose Television Network. Yes, Black on Purpose Television Network. All black, all positive, all the time. The largest black-owned streaming television network in the world. Bringing our people together worldwide. Controlling our messages, our stories, our way. Black TV, the way it should be. Black music, black history, and more. 30 plus channels, thousands of shows. Black on Purpose Television Network, subscribe now. Gain knowledge in minutes from insightful summaries of progressive and socially conscious books. Blacklisted gives you access to curated content that'll satisfy your curiosity to learn and understand different perspectives. Empower yourself through inspirational and actionable ideas. It's easy to read or listen to on the go. Blacklisted. Empower yourself. Start your free trial today. We all know the cannabis industry is headed toward an uprise in the past decade. What happens when there is a brand that brings this uprise in a blow? The cannabis industry welcomes her uprise. Hustle her hemp. Delivering excellence with pride is her watchword, and how you choose to embrace it makes it a priority. From cultivating rich cannabis into exquisite and tastefully finished CBD products to delivery, Hustler Hemp leaves no stone unturned. Hustler Hemp's mission is to empower women of color by building business and creating legacies, uniting beauty, health, and business. We are a pure definition of how we want the CBD industry to become in the future. While we are redefining innovation, we bring the same energy to improving the quality of life. Hustle Her Hemp is the new Uprise. Nine ten, the Super Station, the oldest radio station in town since 1922. Welcome back to the African History Network show, right here on nine ten AM Super Station, the Future Radio. I'm your host, brother Michael M. Hotel. It is Sunday, August first, twenty twenty one. And we are live. Call in numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call in number if you have a question or comment. All right. I want to jump into um, this first story here dealing with Simone Biles. So we know that Simone Biles had to drop out of the um uh, vault competition and the uneven bars. We talked about that on a Friday show. Okay. She had to drop out of the uh, vault competition and the uneven bars and the um, USA gymnastics team put out a statement on Friday and said she will continue to be evaluated daily to determine whether to compete in the finals for, for floor exercise and balance beam. Uh, the team said in the statement now, and then, uh, we got the news, um, late, uh, we got the news late Saturday night 
that uh, she's also pulling out of the floor competition uh, as well. OK, so NB NBC News has a story dealing with this. Simone Biles pulls out of floor competition. Uh, we're going to pull that up and then we're going to go to this uh, clip here dealing with what are the twisties. We'll go to that in just a second here. What are the twisties? It's something very serious dealing with gymnasts people who are not in gymnastics uh, may not understand this. Uh, but if we look at this piece here from NBC News from July 31st, Saturday, July 31st, 2021, updated. Um, this was updated uh, August 1st. Um, Simone Biles will make a decision on whether to compete in the balance beam final later, USA Gymnastics said. Um, USA uh, Gymnastics superstar Simone Biles has withdrawn from the floor event. Uh, she's withdrawn from the floor event. Uh, it was reported on Sunday. That leaves Biles only one event left to possibly compete in the balance beam contest on Tuesday. Okay. Now, um, the organization USA Gymnastics said in the tweet, has withdrawn from the event final uh, for floor and will make a decision on beam later this week. Either way, we're all behind you, Simone, end quote. Now, it is uh, the latest unexpected turn in the uh, Olympic Games that was supposed to be a showcase, supposed to be a showcase for Simone Biles and which has thrust uh, the four-time gold medalist headlong into the conversation about mental health and athletics, okay? And one of the things that gymnasts who competed back in the 90s are saying, like Dominique Dawes, one of the things they're, they're saying is that back in the 90s, the, the, the uh, women or the girls, some of them were 15, 16 years old competing, they didn't have the option really of not competing. OK, and she said it's good to see Simone Biles put her mental health above performing. OK, uh, now Simone Biles, who came into the games as a heavy favorite, has cited her mental health. As the reason for withdrawing from the competitions. Um, quote, uh, Biles wrote on Friday in an Instagram post, she said, for anyone saying I quit, I didn't quit especially these trolls commenting right here. Half y'all can't even sit up in the bed in the morning. Uh, that's the only, uh, that's the most, most thing you do uh, regarding gymnastics is trying to sit up in the bed each morning. For anyone saying I quit, I didn't quit. My mind and body are simply not in sync as you can see here. Um, she said, I don't think you realize how dangerous this is on hard competition surface nor do I have to explain why I put health first, okay? Physical health is mental health, okay? In other words, she did a Della Reese. She said, kiss my entire ass. She did a Della Reese. That's basically what she did, uh, but she did it in a nice way. Now, Simone Biles added that she will, uh, th that she was still suffering with the twisties and literally cannot tell up from down, literally can cannot tell up from down. Now, a lot of people commenting, can't tell up from down, but that's because y'all drunk all the time. Okay. Either drunk or high all the time. Okay. She's, she's dealing with a mental issue. The people commenting and running their mouths, half y'all can't sit up in the bed in the morning. You got another problem. Okay. Uh, you know, maybe you need alcoholics anonymous or detox or something like that. Now the first inkling that Simone Biles was struggling came on Tuesday when she shocked the Olympic world by suddenly withdrawing from the team, from the team final. Then the 2016 gold medalist pulled out of the individual all around, uh, pulled out of the individual uh, all around competition. OK, she pulled out the individual all around competition. Uh, people like Michael Phelps, who has suffered with a depression, has applauded Simone Biles as well. All right. Another Olympian, uh, the most decorated gymnast in history, Simone Biles has received widespread support from other athletes, including uh, Olympic swimming legend Michael Phelps, who has been open about his battle with depression. 
uh, Michael Phelps said it, it broke my heart. Uh, he said of some bios shocking announcement, adding that he hopes for withdrawal from the event will make waves beyond this year's games. He hopes her drawing withdrawing from the event will make ways beyond this year's game games. Uh, Michael Phelps went on to say, I hope this is an eye opening experience. I really do. I hope this is an opportunity for us to jump on board and to even blow this mental health thing even more wide open. It is so much bigger than we ever imagined. It is so much bigger than we ever imagined. Now that's from uh, somebody who's uh, probably, I guess he's like the greatest swimmer of all time, uh, Michael Phelps, uh, as far as Olympics goes. Uh, so, you know, I, I find it interesting when a lot of people criticize it, you know, a fat and out of shape, uh, you know, can't do one one hundredth of what Simone Biles can do. And they want to criticize it. All right. Uh, I want to go to this clip here. Then we'll go to the phone lines. Uh, Jalen, let's go to, I want to go to clip one here. This is from the Today Show. And this deals with uh, what are the uh, twisties? What are the twisties? Yeah, on the Olympic stage, every flip and every spin is the result of a lifetime of training. <laughs> Well-developed muscle memory that athletes like Simone Biles rely on as they hurdle through the air. <laughs> Perfect. Biles often flawlessly performs some of the hardest skills in the world. So when she came up short on her vault Tuesday, the world took notice. Wow. And that was not what was planned. I was trying a two and a half, and I ended up doing a one and a half, just got a little bit lost in the air, um, which is really unfortunate. Fellow gymnast immediately knew what happened. She got lost, and any gymnast knows we, we call it the twisties. The twisties is a common phenomenon when gymnasts are in midair and lose awareness of where they are in the skill, making it difficult to land safely. Amy Gorman, who coached Biles for 12 years, including the 2016 Rio Olympics, says Biles has dealt with the twisties before. Every once in a while, she would form this block, and it usually had nothing to do with the gymnastics itself. It had to do with other things going on in her universe. For gymnasts, being off by just a fraction can have catastrophic consequences. Former Olympic gold medal gymnast Dominique Mociano defended Biles' decision to withdraw from the final tweeting a video of herself slipping and landing on her head during one Olympic routine when she was 14. But it's not just gymnasts who suffer from these kinds of mental blocks. They're known as the yips for other athletes. Whoa. It's when just out of nowhere an athlete suddenly can't do the basic fundamentals of their sport. To overcome the twisties, some gymnasts often go back to the basics a process to trust again that can take time. Normally when it would happen, we would go back to training and we would stop doing the skills that were making her feel like she was in the 50s. It is just spectacular. Files now says she's taking it day by day. A champion making it clear her mental and physical health is more valuable than any medal. Simone's former coach also telling us it may take two days or two weeks for Biles to get comfortable with the skill again. So she didn't rule out Simone competing in a final here in Tokyo. One possibility is that she might switch out the problematic skill mm -hmm. for something else. And maybe that gives her the confidence to come back. Or she could just wake up tomorrow and be fine. Yeah. But there's no real rhyme or reason to how she works through this and it entirely on Simone's timetable. Well, your comparison to the yips, I think, helps a lot of folks understand precisely what, what it is. If you know what the yips are, yeah. which I did not, that's a golf thing? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's okay. a golf thing and it's also a sport thing. So you have a mental block and then you can't do something. The really scary thing here is that a mental block in this sport can lead to a catastrophic injury. Well, this also, she has the opportunity to, to do an individual apparatus. So maybe there's one apparatus like the vault that's potentially potentially, you know, making her feel unsure, but maybe there's another one that maybe she, she doesn't goes have back that issue. Hoda, yeah. what do you think? I mean, this is fascinating, something that we really had never even considered before. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I was just learning about it through this. And, yeah, you do think, well, what are the events that don't take that much flipping around in the air? And you think about the uneven bars or maybe the beam. I mean, maybe it's one of those two. Um, you know, her team wants her to compete, and it was interesting what Tariko said, that she has been practicing. So you never know what's going to happen. We still have several days for her to decide. So, and, you know, I guess we'll wait and see what happens. Okay, so that's from the Today Show, uh, dealing with what are – the twisties what are the twisties uh that's at nbcnews.com now uh dominique dawes was interviewed by uh zinger news there's an article from uh the griot.com uh about uh dominique dawes okay gymnast dominique dawes she knows what she's talking about she also has an academy to train gymnasts as well a uh, former olympian Dominique Dawes offers her support to Simone Biles. Former Olympian Dominique Dawes offers her support uh, to Simone Biles. And um, in here, Dominique Dawes is now 44 years old. She's a mother. We remember her from the 90s and 2000. Um, now the iconic athlete is back in the news, this time showing support for uh, current uh for showing support for current star gymnast Simone Biles, who withdrew from competition at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Um, now, one of the things she said is that uh, she needs to do what is best for Simone. Dominique Dawes told Zinger News she needs to do what is best for Simone. Uh, she said at the end of the day, she is the one who has to live her life. Just like Naomi Osaka, who made the decision to not partake in the press conference because she was concerned about her mental health, athletes need to be able to do to, athletes need to be able to say no. Uh, Dominique Dahl said she went on to say if they feel that it's unhealthy for them, they need to be able to step away. Now, considering her own Olympic experiences. Uh, she says she thinks about the, quote, level of sacrifice and commitment and what it took to earn a spot on the Olympic stage. OK, this is uh, Dominique Dawes. She said, quote, we did what was told of us. We did what was told of us back in the 90s. Gymnasts were literally trained to be robots. Back in the 90s, gymnasts were liter literally trained to be robots. It is very much a breath of fresh air to be a 44-year-old woman and to listen to my inner voice now. So she supports uh, Dominique Dawes. I mean, she, she supports Simone Biles. Um, now, a competitor in gymnastics for decades, Dominique Dawes moved away from her family to train at age six. She told Zinger News that while she was known for expressionless faces during competition she encourages the kids she trains at the dominique dawes gymnastics and ninja academy that it is okay to smile she said i think it is important for our kids to enjoy their childhood okay you can uh, now the other thing that's really extremely important to understand and a lot of these white men commenting uh and attacking her and some of the african-americans one, ones as well uh, Dominique Dawes is a victim of sexual assault from uh, Dr. Larry Nasser. OK, the, the, the gymnast doctor, Dr. Larry Nasser. In last year's documentary, Art of the Athlete, Dominique Dawes talked about the sexual abuse by former USA Gymnastics Dr. Larry Nasser that many young women, including Simone Biles, endured. Now, the abuse was cited as one reason why Simone Biles exited the Olympics, and she was the only survivor on the 2020 Tokyo team that was a, a, a victim of uh, Dr. Larry Nasser. Okay, so read the rest of this uh, piece here from the griot.com uh, by uh, Biba Adams, uh, former Olympian Dominique Dawes offers her support to Simone Biles. I also saw an interview that Dominique Dawes did um, on MSNBC as well. Okay, let's go to the phone lines um everybody thanks for holding let's go to fernando line one fernando welcome to the african history network show thanks for holding tell us where you're calling from fernando uh 
yes, I, I'm calling from uh, Detroit. From Detroit. And, uh, I wanted to say that. Beg your pardon. Yeah, from Detroit. Yeah, go ahead. I was just repeating Hello? what you said. Yes, and, and how you doing today, Michael? I'm Hope Jeff. I'm all right, and brother. I wanted to say that you have a very, very some very interesting topics here, and I wanted to comment about uh, Simone Biles. Sure. I feel that she deserves kudos for speaking out because, as you said, I feel that a lot of athletes. Uh, wanted to speak out, but for uh, obvious reasons, they were not outspoken about what they were going through. And if you look at Mike Tyson, mm -hmm. he went, he was going through uh, suppression and he was going through uh, mental abnormalities and he was telling people about it, but for the most part, he didn't get any credit for speaking out about it. And I don't think people were very sympathetic to uh, Mike Tyson. So I really feel that in this time that we're living in, statistics show that over 58% of Americans are going through some type of psychological abnormality or some type of problem. Yep. So this is something that we really need to look at and we need to pay more attention to. And uh, also, if you look at even the prison system, they're saying now that over 54% of the people that are incarcerated have some type of psychological abnormality. And that really needs to be addressed. And I think that we should put more emphasis on well health, on mental health and well-being well brother you you know if, if white people have mental issues you know african americans do because white supremacy will make you go crazy white, white supremacy will cause you to have mental issues man i'm telling you so if 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 if, if white people got mental issues what do you think we have okay yeah and and one and one of the things yeah. that uh and i'll let you finish in just a second here one of the things that dominique dawes said was that in the interview I saw on MSNBC, she said that when she was competing, um, they didn't have social media like they do today. She said when she was competing, you know, you know, message boards were just popping up like in 96 message boards were just popping up. So YouTube mm. wasn't created in 2005. Twitter, I think 2010. See, you didn't have social media back in like 96 and 2000 like you do today with social media. People can attack you and talk about you on social media and then you find out about it. So that impacts you as well. OK, negatively. Go, go ahead, uh, yes, Fernando. Yes, sir. And the other thing that you brought up, too, about Johnson & Johnson, I was really surprised at doing some research that Coretta Scott King uh, had uh, cervical cancer. And a matter of fact, she had to go to Mexico to get treatment. And she was using Johnson & Johnson powder at one time. So mm. I think that this issue of, of what Trump is, is, is uh, pursuing, I think that he has a very, very good uh, legal grounds to stand on. And the other thing that bothers me, too, uh, Michael, is the fact that I found out through research that over 80% of the hysterectomies that women of color get, they don't need them. Yeah, I, I've heard that. I've heard that a lot, man. I, I'm not sure the exact statistics, but I, I've heard that a lot uh, with uh, African American women being targeted with unnecessary uh, hysterectomies. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yep. I've heard that. Okay, Fernando, thanks for calling. Keep listening, okay? And thank you for taking my call. You, all God right. bless you, brother. All right, you too, brother. Thank you, thank you, appreciate it. And we we all we all need to help. There's a lot going on right now. Um, let's go let's go back to the phone lines quickly let's go to um who we have next charles yeah charles line two hey charles welcome to the african history network show thanks for holding charles tell us where you're calling from uh thank you brother hotel michael hotel michael m hotel yes sir. uh i'm calling from detroit okay uh i'm very concerned about life people you mm -hmm. know um mm -hmm. uh, i mean like the basic food, clothes, and shelter, respect, integrity, you know, mm -hmm. dignity, and uh, having humor. You know, life is beautiful. And regardless of the culture or the ethnicity or the nationality or the complexion of anybody's uh, uh, pigmentation, you know, we got woolly hair, we got curly hair, wavy hair, we got straight hair, you know, right, we got right. different complexions, the whole nine yards. The thing is in, uh, respect, you know, worldwide, you know what I'm saying? I mean, right. things happen for a reason, and a lot of people perpetrate this and perpetrate that. But I give uh, 
kudos to um, the young lady. Yes, yeah, Simone Biles. Biles. Yes. Mm -hmm. Simone, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I give kudos because she, she, she stood up, you know, instead of sitting down, you know, and she's not a part of uh, some type of cliche, you know, or, or some kind of uh, 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 training program, you know right. what I'm saying? She's she doing what she do best, and, and that's what she's been doing. And if she qualifies for whatever medals or trophies or, or whatever, uh, you know, the, uh, that those particular uh, issues um, present, you know, good worldwide. You know what I'm saying? It's right. beautiful. Right. But it's the time for everybody. It's time she she sees it, that she's time for her to take a break. You know, it's gonna always be people that's gonna look on the side where oh she is and oh she. Listen, you, if if these people gonna criticize the, the criticizers, wanna criticize what the young lady or anybody that you know bow out, you know mm -hmm. tap out or whatever, that's let them try and and see how far it goes. You got to be very special to be a person to compete in competition like that, you know? Right, that, exactly. That, you know, first of all, it's entertainment, then it's competition, you know, then it's business administration, and then it's education. We got to need that education to understand all of the above, you know? Right. Be, you know, I mean, hey, man, you know, we got, too much, we got too much to be proud of, you know, regardless of who we are, right. you know, whether... You know what I'm saying? Right, right. I, I got you. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I feel, you know? Okay. And I appreciate you, my brother. All right, Charles. Thanks for calling, man. Thanks for holding. Okay, keep listening. Okay, um, I want to go uh, quickly here to this article. Then we're going to go to the story about Benjamin Crump suing uh, Johnson & Johnson. Uh, read this article here from the Washington Post. We talked about it earlier in the week. For exceptional black women like Simone Biles, greatness is never enough. For exceptional black women like Simone Biles, greatness is never enough. This is from uh, the Washington Post written by Candace uh, Buckner. OK, and it talks about the pressure that Simone Biles is under um, having to, to be the face of gymnastics and to be the face of saving gymnastics, especially after the Larry Nassar debacle and the, and the, the sexual abuse debacle. Um uh, Candace Buckner for the Washington Post said whenever Simone Biles pulls on her leotard, it's as though she's tightening a cape around her neck. She's the hero tasked with saving a sullied sport, embodying the some embodying some trite belief in American dominance and also carrying a gender and an entire race, also carrying a gender and an entire race that's a heavy cape and it chokes but it's one that exceptional black women and women of, co of color are told to wear because uh because simply being great isn't good enough they have to be superlative as well as trailblazers they have have to be avatars and progress and change and also fulfill a deeper societal res societal responsibility as role models who break glass ceilings while breaking records thing it's okay for simone biles just be amazing let her greatness stand on its own we can be wild and celebrate her without also expecting her to single-handedly without also expecting her to single-handedly revive gymnastics after a sexual a sexual abuse scandal while also leading little black girls to balance beams all over the nation and she was a victim of the sexual abuse scandal as well so read the rest of this piece here by candace buckner for uh the washington post for exceptional black women like simone biles greatness is never enough okay then there was a uh, uh there was an excellent piece also from uh the undefeated that we talked about earlier in the week um and the one from the undefeated was dealing with uh let me pull this one up it was dealing with um when uh good is never uh, when black women are punished for being the best okay this is we talked about this earlier in the week uh from the 
undefeated. So all these shows we rebroadcast on our social media platforms, our Facebook fan page and our YouTube channel. We rebroadcast those throughout the week. Um, read this piece here by uh, Denny Michelle Norris from July 23rd, 2021 for the undefeated.com. Um, this is entitled when black women are punished for being the best, when black women are punished for being the best. And it talks about Simone Bile, but it also talks about an African-American female ice skater named uh, uh, Surya uh, Bonnelly and how uh, Simone Biles, there are two moves that Simone Biles does, and she's the only gymnast that can do these moves. The uh, Olympics have banned these two moves because of their high level of complexity and they're afraid uh, gymnasts will hurt themselves trying to do these moves. So then you ban Simone Biles from doing these two moves that only she can do. Um, Simone Biles, so that's something that this article talks about uh, as well. The, um, she will likely perform three, now this was written opening day of the Olympics. She will likely perform three of the four skills that are named the Biles at the 2020 games in Tokyo as well as her new vault, the the Yoshinko double pike, which will then become the fifth Biles, the fifth Biles move named after her. She has advanced the technical side of gymnastics in unprecedented ways, yet two of her skills are undervalued by the code of points. Two of her skills are undervalued by the code of points. In other words, she will not get adequate credit for their difficulty in competition. The Federation of International Gymnastics, FIG, the Federa Federation of International Gymnastics claims it wants to dissuade uh, lesser gymnasts from trying such difficult skills and sustaining in injuries. The, the, the Federation of International Gymnastics claims that it wants to dissuade lesser gymnasts from trying such difficult skills and sustaining injuries, but it's beginning to look like a pattern in subjective, largely white dominated sports, the policing of black women's bodies, limit, limiting how far ahead of the field they can actually be. So they ban these two moves that only Simone Biles can do. So you have to say, wait, hold on, wait a second. So you tell us to, uh, See, this reminds me of that. This reminds me of that poll from 2020, uh, from 2018 by um, the Gallup poll, where 40 percent of white people said African-Americans could be equally successful if they tried harder. 40 percent. Now, it was April 4th, 2018, when this poll came out. OK, and April 4th. It, it, uh, 2018 was the 50th, 50th anniversary of the assassination of Dr. King. All right. Read this, read this article here from uh, Newsweek. They didn't want to take into account racism, anything like that. They said African, they, they, they didn't talk about 246 years of slavery, decades of Jim Crow segregation, being locked out of the Homestead Act of 1862 and the Southern Homestead Act of 1866. They ain't deal with none of that stuff. They just said African-Americans could be equally as successful as white people. If they just tried harder, 40 percent of whites think black people just need to try harder poll finds. Read this article here from Newsweek.com, April 4th, 2018. Anyone deal with systemic racism, all this stuff. So then when you say try harder, then we try and exceed your wildest expectations. Then we get penalized. Oh, you. you oh, you too successful. Then we get penalized. OK, read this from Newsweek.com. Um, I want to go to this next story here. And we're going to go to um, we're going to go to clip the clip from CBS News uh, next, uh, Jalen. This deals with Benjamin Crump, attorney Benjamin Crump, who we know from uh, Trayvon Martin and uh, other cases uh, dealing with police brutality, things like this. George Floyd, uh, one of the ones most recently uh, dealing with uh, the killing of George Floyd, uh, Benjamin Crump is suing Johnson and Johnson uh, 
on behalf of African American women over uh, the baby powder, Johnson and Johnson baby powder, and because of um, saying that Johnson and Johnson baby powder causes cancer. Okay, this is a very very important lawsuit. Um, let's go to uh, the clip from uh, CBS News, Jalen. It is about the lives of our grandmothers, our mothers, our sisters, our daughters, our nieces, and our wives, and how they were sinisterly targeted by Johnson & Johnson, this multi-billion dollar corporation who their corporate executives knew about the link between talcum baby powder and ovarian cancer. And you see in the 1990s, when they started to write in the newspapers about this connection, there are internal documents that talk about there was a drop off between white women using the baby powder. But they observed that there was no drop off, Janice, between black women and Hispanic women using the baby powder. And so, Paul, they doubled their efforts in marketing to black women. And that is what is so sinister about it. Okay. Um, I know we're coming up here on the break. Um, so that was from uh, CBS News. There's also an article that April Ryan did for the griot.com with uh, Benjamin Crump. Okay. Uh, and this one is entitled uh, Ben Crump files uh johnson and johnson lawsuit ben crump files johnson and johnson lawsuit on behalf of black women over powder causing cancer black on purpose television network yes black on purpose television network all black all positive all the time the largest black owned streaming television network in the world bringing our people together worldwide Controlling our messages, our story, our way. Black TV, the way it should be. Black music, black history, and more. 30 plus channels, thousands of shows. Black on Purpose Television Network, subscribe now. For 25 years, the Black History 101 Mobile Museum has carried on the rich legacy of the Black Museum movement in America by showcasing original artifacts of the Black experience at colleges, universities, K-12 schools, corporations, libraries, conferences, and cultural events, making it the most traversed Black History mobile exhibit in American history. Dr. Khalid El Hakim is the founder of the Black History 101 Mobile Museum, and he is a highly sought after public speaker on topics of black history, social studies, education, museum studies, hip hop and race relations. Dr. Khalid was named among the change makers for NBC Universal's Erase the Hate campaign and listed as one of the 100 men of distinction for black enterprise. He recently founded the Michigan Hip Hop Archive on the campus of Western Michigan University. The Black History 101 Mobile Museum is currently scheduling in-person and virtual exhibits nationwide. For more information, please contact Dr. Khalid Al-Hakim directly at 313-645-4197, 313-645-4197. Or visit their website at blackhistorymobilemuseum.com. That's blackhistorymobilemuseum.com. You can also email him at bhistory101 at yahoo.com. 
bhistory101 at yahoo.com. Program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of 910 AM Superstation or Adele Media. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 910 AM Superstation Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. It is Sunday, uh, August 1st, 2021, and we are live. Uh, we had to do the update there on the Olympics. Okay, call the numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call-in number if you have a question or comment. Um, right before the break, we were talking about the story of Attorney Benjamin Crump filing a lawsuit against uh, Johnson & Johnson on behalf of African-American women over the baby powder over the Johnson Johnson baby powder um, regarding concerns that it could cause ovarian cancer. We're going to go back to that story in just a minute here. Um, you can register for the new 10 week online course that I teach. Um, this one here is from the civil war to the black, uh, from the civil war to the civil rights movement and black power, uh, 1865 to 1968 from the civil war to the civil rights movement and black power from 1865 to 1968. This is a 10 week online course that I teach on Saturdays, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And each class we go through and analyze a 10 year period of time after this, after slavery ended, after the Civil War ended. And uh, right now we're going through Reconstruction, 1865 to 1877. So we'll go all throughout history chronologically and we'll go through the Jim Crow era and World War One, World War Two, Great Migration, um, uh, Universal Negro Improvement Association, Marcus Garvey, Harlem Renaissance, uh, Civil Rights Movement, uh, 1954 and 55, uh, Brown versus Board of Ed Education, uh, lynching of Emmett Till, August 28, 1955, beginning of the Montgomery bus boycott, December 5th, 1955. We'll go through and we'll go through the beginning of the Black Power Movement in 1966, and then uh, the assassination of Dr. King took, and look at what happened after slavery ended, this uh, for approximately 103 year period of time to understand how we got to where we are today, okay? And to be able to understand where we need to go from here and, 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 and what needs to happen in the future, we have to understand the history of how we got to where we are today. So this is what we do in this online course. I do a PowerPoint presentation, we have uh, book references, articles, video clips, etc. You can visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Uh, and then also uh, we'll post a link here. You can register for the classes. Um, regularly $130 is on sale, $80. And then all the sessions uh, are record. We do the classes live on Saturdays, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. So you can join us in the class live. You can see me. I can't see you. Uh, we have a live text chat so you can ask questions also and then um all the sessions are archived as well so if you miss anything you can go back and watch it over and over again all the sessions are archived you can go back and watch it over and over again and um you still have access to the uh, course even after the class is over with as well okay all right um so so visit africanhistorynetwork.com and then the other uh, online course that I teach, Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, what they didn't teach you in school. That class meets on Sundays, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. So I taught that class today as well. You can register for that also. All right, let's go back to the story here dealing with uh, uh, Benjamin Crump. Uh, I had not heard a whole lot about this. Um, I read about it in African-American media. I saw some articles uh from uh, uh cbs news and uh abc news about it but i, I first learned about this from the griot.com first learned about this from uh african-american media okay so if we look at this piece here from the griot by um uh, april ryan okay april ryan uh for the griot this is uh, ben Crump files lawsuit, uh, files Johnson Johnson lawsuit uh, on behalf of black women over uh, powder causing cancer, over powder causing cancer. And let's look at this here. 
okay uh ben crump is filing the lawsuit on behalf of black women so he's filing this on behalf of the uh national council of negro women the national council of negro women uh alleging that johnson and johnson targeted sales of talcum powder products to black women knowing concerns that it could cause ovarian cancer knowing concerns that it could cause ovarian cancer so uh attorney benjamin crump and his team uh so the lawsuit alleges that since the 1990s johnson and johnson targeted sales uh, of talcum powder products to women knowing the concerns that it could cause ovarian cancer targeted talcum talcum powder products to black women targeted talc talcum powder talcum powder products to black women knowing the concerns that it could cause ovarian cancer so this effort has an ally in the united states senate senator elizabeth warren is set to propose legislation to prevent the company johnson and johnson from filing that would limit their liability in this case sources close to the massachusetts senator senator elizabeth warren contend uh she wants to lessen further victimization of african-american women this is not elizabeth warren's first time looking at ways to legally protect victims in corporate cases uh the former presidential candidate has said she would like to see an uh, uh, like to see an america where billionaires are held accountable an america where, where billionaires are held accountable now attorney benjamin crump exclusively told uh the grill.com uh on uh this past tuesday that johnson and johnson quote targeted black women with their marketing after white women stopped using it in the early 1990s after after newspapers started writing about the link between talcum powder and ovarian cancer all right and he said that in the press conference as well uh from uh, cbs news uh benjamin crump said that johnson and johnson quote targeted black women with their marketing after white women stopped using uh stop using johnson and johnson talcum in the early 1990s after newspapers started writing about the link between talcum powder and ovarian cancer end quote now janice matthews the executive director of the national council of negro women in a press release said quote this company through its women images told black women that we were offensive in our natural state and needed to use their products to stay fresh end quote we were offensive in our natural state and needed to use their products to stay fresh uh janice matthews uh reiterates trust was uh she reiterates that trust was crushed as quote generations of black women generations of black women believed them and made it our daily practice to use their products in ways that uh put us at risk of cancer and we taught our daughters to do the same shame on johnson and johnson end quote all right now benjamin crump's legal team is filing uh lawsuits and other lawsuits in mass tort litigation in multiple states against the mega pharmaceutical company however there is a class action lawsuit uh crump contends many black women are not part of okay he contends that there is a class action lawsuit that uh black women are not part of during tuesday's press conference at the national headquarters of the national council of negro women uh benjamin crump 
is expected to well this was before it uh he was expected to put faces to this story to quote show black women victims uh who have died to show black women victims who who have died because of this corporate greed who have died because of this corporate greed now I want to go to uh, this clip here. There was a uh, piece from the Black News Channel. They talked about this story on Black News Channel. And uh, my friend Candace Kelly, who's an attorney and legal analyst, and we're um, sometimes panelists on Roland Martin Unfiltered, she uh, talked about this lawsuit, okay? Let's go to this clip, uh, Jalen. I think this is clip, uh, I think it's clip three. It's from the Black News Channel. Well, big news for renowned civil rights attorney Ben Crump. He has filed a lawsuit on behalf of a group of black women against Johnson & Johnson. At issue is the company's talcum-based baby powder. Our justice correspondent, Candace Kelly, is back with us this morning to tell us about it. And Candace, look, we were talking on the break. I don't know a black woman alive uh, back in the day that didn't use Johnson & Johnson talcum powder. If you took a bath, you was going to put some talcum powder on your body at some point, even kids when we were kids as That's well. That's right. But what, what is, what, what, so tell us about this. What, what have Ben Crump and his team accusing the company of doing here? Well, Benjamin Crump, he filed a negligence lawsuit on behalf of the National Council of Negro Women. He said that thousands of its members have used Johnson & Johnson's powder products, just like we were talking about, and that the company targeted sales of these products to black women knowing that it would cause ovarian cancer. Now, this issue may sound familiar to some because for years there has been a controversy around these products. In fact, last year the company announced that it would stop selling its talc-based baby powder in Canada and the United States, replacing it, Mike, with cornstarch baby-based products. Well, to know that something is causing those type of issues within the community is just frivolous. It's just crazy, to be quite honest, which is what, what do you expect in this country sometimes from uh, organizations and from politicians. Yes. Uh, there have been more than 20,000 lawsuits, though, against Johnson & Johnson about this very issue, Candace. So, and in fact, they've actually settled these cases, similar to this. So how is this one different? Yes, so they've settled many cases for millions of dollars. And anyone actually can now go online, fill out paperwork, make a claim against the company because they've got money set aside for these cases. But this filing is a little different. It says that Johnson & Johnson specifically marketed talcum-based baby powder to overweight black women. Despite these links to the ovarian cancers that I mentioned, the suit also alleges that Johnson & Johnson spent half of its advertising budget, half, in doing so. So this mm. was something that was very well-intentioned. They set out to do this, and as we know, with the black women that we know that might be oversized or small size, any age, we use this. We have used this product over the years. It, it was yeah. definitely in our community. This, this, this is like tobacco companies uh, advertising to kids. To be quite honest with you, knowing that you know kids. Um, but you know, anyway, uh, look, politicians are behind this. Uh, yes. Senator Elizabeth Warren. Uh, she's shown full support for this lawsuit. And so uh, how, how is she factoring, factoring into all of this? So, yeah, Ben Crump has major support in Senator Elizabeth Warren. Now, she's supposed to introduce legislation that will prevent the company, Johnson & Johnson, from limiting their liability in this case. Because when you talk about accountability, well, records show that Johnson & Johnson knew what they were doing. This is a powder that contains small amounts of asbestos, Mike. And it's on record mm -hmm. on internal documents that the company debated putting a warning on the powder, not to use it in genital areas as a deodorant or in sanitary napkins or in condoms, but they chose not to put that warning on its label. And this is why they are where they are. And, and I'm going to get to a final question. Now, I'm going to get to this question right here, but I got a, a, a big one at the end. Because um, we talked about the 20,000 lawsuits. We talked about the number of cases that they've already settled. This, this is, once again, just a, a string of big hits that this company is taking. Yeah, you and I have discussed this settlement um, in the past. The settlement with New York for their opioid-related claims are for $263 million. And they've been getting some flack, of course, about their single-shot vaccine, as some studies have shown that it may not be as effective against variants of the virus as other vaccines. And now a lawsuit with Ben Crump attached? 
this certainly is not a position that any company, any person wants to be in. So yeah. a big deal. Yeah. Ben Crump fights for all rights, especially you know, black people out there. He's a very busy man. And I know he'll get the job done. But here's the thing, Ken. So we know, and you, you did a great job of breaking it down, letting us know what they knew and what they didn't tell mm -hmm. black people. And they still service that product towards those black people. It's one thing to get money. It's one thing for civil. Why isn't somebody criminally responsible for something like this? You know, that that is a good question. What we're talking about here is more of a product liability, right? Um, and so when we talk about products and things of that nature, we're talking about money. In terms of somebody criminally having something uh, against them and those types of charges, I, that just hasn't come up yet. I'm trying to think of something that could be attached to it, but really we're talking specifically about a product. Now, if we're talking about somebody else that had some other ill intentions behind this uh, that had to do more with just kind of this marketing idea that knowing black women, especially larger black women, would be inclined to use this and we're talking about something else. But now it's just a product liability question, and in that regard we're talking about negligence, so money. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I know you hit them in the pocket and yeah. that hurts and whatnot, but at the same time, when you talk about deterrence sometimes, you, you got to put people in jail. You yeah. know, and when you put people in jail, when people know something like this, I don't care if it's the CEO, I don't care if it's the, the person who's in charge of marketing or whatnot, whoever knew that this was affecting black people or any group of people and you still sold that product and you did not disclose it, it's almost like the NFL. In a sense, when it came to concussions, whatnot, you knew that the NFL, the hard hit to the head, was affecting these NFL players, and you neglected to tell anybody about that. Yes, to me, all, that all, all in the name uh, of money, uh, as you said, mm -hmm. um, and and again, a paperwork trail left behind them to actually tell on them, which is why they are here where they are now. This, this is not over, and this is really interesting that Ben Crump would take this case and that we normally hear him in regards to various, um, you know, to other cases having to do with uh, violence against people in terms of police violence. Mm -hmm. um, but, but looking at what this will do in terms of setting a precedent, this is a big way for him to open doors into other avenues that people are dealing with in our community. This is a huge one. Again, it's been on the books for a long time, but now we're moving into getting into the minds of these people at Johnson & Johnson. They are certainly are at fault um, uh, because it's already on record. They're dealing with this on other levels. So we'll have to see what happens with black women in particular, who they marketed to. Yeah. Okay, so that is uh, from the Black News Channel. Check out the uh, article here from um, the Black News Channel. This one uh, right here. Ben Crump filed lawsuit against Johnson and Johnson on behalf of black women. Quote, black women have always been the backbone of this country, standing up for everyone, but receiving the least amount of respect. Well, it's time that we stand up for black women, he said. Uh, we'll continue this on the other side of the break. You listen to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation Future Radio on Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Hi, I'm Joel Wilson, president and CEO of JCW Computer Consulting, LLC, a technology implementation firm with over 20 years of satisfying customers. We offer a full spectrum of industry top tier branded services. We are an authorized partner or reseller for Lenovo, Zoom, T-Mobile, Microsoft 365 and Surface tablets, Google Workspace, Acer, Asus, Samsung, PCmatic security software, and many more. Our online store features laptops, Chromebooks, computers, printers, accessories, and software. Businesses, take advantage of our free one-hour Zoom tech consultation and know we offer top nationwide high-speed internet service providers, voice over IP, and cellular phone services. Home users, don't miss our current in-stock Chromebook inventory. Please visit us at jcwcc.com or call 215-879-6701. Gain knowledge in minutes from insightful summaries of progressive and socially conscious books. Blacklisted gives you access to curated content that'll satisfy your curiosity to learn and understand different perspectives. Empower yourself through inspirational and actionable ideas. It's easy to read or listen to on the go. Blacklisted, empower yourself. 
Start your free trial today. Black on Purpose Television Network. Yes, Black on Purpose Television Network. All black, all positive, all the time. The largest black owned streaming television network in the world. Bringing our people together worldwide. Controlling our messages, our stories, our way. Black TV, the way it should be. Black music, black history, and more. 30 plus channels, thousands of shows. Black on Purpose Television Network, subscribe now. 910, the Superstation, Detroit's only African American talk radio. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 910 AM, the Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Sunday, August 1st, 2021, and we are live. Uh, calling numbers 313-778-7600, 313-778-7600. Have a question or comment. We'll go back to the phone lines here in just a minute. Also, if you like this type of information, you can support the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN Show, through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN Show, through Cash App, also through PayPal, paypal.me, forward slash the AHN Show. This helps us keep doing the research, keep broadcasting six days a week, stay on the air, pay some of the bills, etc. cetera. Um, and this is our official Cash App account, dollar sign, the AHN Show, S-H-O-W. These other ones are fake cash app accounts people set up and it has my name there and shows shows my name, Michael, and then uh, shows my picture there also. All right. And then you can also visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Um, and then the uh, new online course that I teach on Saturdays, um, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968 this is a 10 week online course where we deal with what happened after slavery ended and go through history chronologically. Each class, we analyze about a 10 year period of history. We do the class live. All the sessions are recorded and archived. You can go back and watch them over and over again. Visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com and scroll down the page. Click on register here. It takes you to the next page and um, click on enroll uh, on the next page. And you can start watching uh, the content. Uh, there you can start watching uh, the content from the last class and you'll be ready ready for uh saturday 3 p.m eastern standard time all right uh, i want to go back to this uh story here dealing with uh benjamin crump this is a, this is an important story and i have not heard a lot about it either okay i have not heard a lot about it either uh he's suing johnson and johnson okay uh, over the talcum powder and that has been, uh, as he says, and as the lawsuit says, um, the, the cell sales of talcum powder that targeted African-American women, knowing concerns that it could cause ovarian cancer. And as the piece that we heard from the black news channel said, it also targeted overweight African-American women as a legal analyst, uh, Candace Kelly said it all, they also allegedly targeted overweight, um, African-American women. Now I'm looking uh, back at the, uh, article here from the Grio because April one has a piece in the Grio, uh, at the Grio.com about this. Um, during Tuesday's press conference, at national headquarters for for the uh, National Council of Negro Women, Benjamin Crump uh, was expected to put faces to this history, uh, to the story, to quote show the black victims who have died because of this corporate greed. Show the black victims who have died because of this corporate greed. Now, in recent months, Johnson and John has taken a uh, brand and credibility hit a brand and credibility hit with uh, questions about its vaccine being uh, able to withstand the COVID-19 Delta variant and if a booster shot is needed. Also, the Food and Drug Administration added new warnings 
on Johnson & Johnson vaccines related to um, uh, COVID-19. A recent Johnson & Johnson vaccination paused due to confusion about the ingredients of the vaccine did not bode well with American uh, with the American psyche in the attempts at vaccinating Americans. Uh, so check this article out here from the griot.com. Uh, this is uh, Ben Crump files Johnson and Johnson lawsuit on behalf of black women over powder causing cancer, over powder causing cancer. This is from July 27th, 2021 from uh, by April Ryan for the griot. All right, now uh, let's go back to the phone lines quickly then i want to get to this next story here dealing with the um this next story deals with the uh march the four-day march 27 mile march that we talked about earlier in the week a couple days in texas okay this is the march in texas and this is for uh voting rights and the for the people act all right uh let's go back to the phone lines let's go to theo uh, Theo Broughton from uh, Hood Research. Theo, welcome to the African History Network show. Tell us uh, how you're doing today. Thank you. I'm doing fantastic. Happy Sunday to you and your listeners. Yeah, happy Sunday I, to you um, too. Thank you. I, I enjoy your show and I, I share that with people and encourage them to tune in as, as well. Now, I have a, a question about the lawsuit yeah. with the uh, Johnson and Johnson, has there been through your research any mention about a statute of limitations or how far they can go back? And you know, if um, descendants can file on behalf. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure regarding the statute of limitations. I'm not. I'm not sure on that. I have to look at that some oh. more. We may talk about that mm -hmm. on Monday show. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Well, last thing, I just, just want to uh, encourage people to um, vote. August 3rd is, is the vote. Tomorrow's the last day. You can go to the satellite locations like Wayne County Community College, Western Campus on Outer Drive, and the Southfield uh, Freeway, and the Eastern Campus on I-94 and Connor, uh, both locations where people can conveniently go to vote up until 4 p.m., also, of course, you can go to the election uh, office, which is on West Grand Boulevard, diagonally across on the Fisher Building. That's a big landmark. But uh, I just want to encourage people to certainly participate and know that Proposal P is um, positive and they should vote yes, it's for the people. Okay. And uh, thank you so much for that. Okay. All right. All right, Theo. And, uh, Th okay. Thank you. All right. It Theo, doesn't your show come on after mine? The loser. Okay. I think Theo also comes on after mine. She's on up at 11 p.m. Okay. Uh, read this piece also here from uh, Black News Channel, BNC um, dot TV. Uh, ben Crump files lawsuit against Johnson & Johnson on behalf of black women. Black women have always been the backbone of this country, standing up for everyone, but receiving the least amount of respect. Well, it is time that we stand up for black women. There's also a tweet here in the. Um, there's also a tweet here in the. Article. Uh, ben Crump tweeted Johnson and Johnson targeted. Uh, black women in marketing campaigns for their talcum based powder. The lives of black women matter. And let's see, let's, uh, let's pull this, see if we can pull this up on his uh, Twitter page. We'll go directly to this tweet. So he said, the lives of black women matter. This multi-billion dollar corporation must be held accountable for knowingly marketing its harmful ovarian cancer causing product to black women all right okay so check that out as well all right uh i can't find it on his twitter page but uh, uh the tweet here is in the article okay now, now i want to go to 
uh, this next story here. So we talked about early in the week, we talked about the march in uh, Texas. And there was a uh, article from uh was this news 3lv there was a, a article from uh, a news outlet there in the texas area and then there's also one from i think abc news then with willie nelson early on mainstream media didn't cover this story okay early on mainstream media didn't cover this story roland martin covered the story because he was broadcasting live from texas live from the march um we know that uh joy reed uh, the readout covered the story uh but early on a lot of uh, you know, a lot of mainstream media didn't uh, cover the story as it got closer to the end as the march got closer to the end they started covering it so huffington post has an article dealing with this also and we talked about this earlier in the week as well um this is about the 27 march 27 mile march i should say 27 mile march reverend barber beto o'rourke launched four-day march for voting rights in texas reverend william barber the poor people's campaign and uh beto o'rourke former member of the house of representatives for texas launched four-day 27 mile march for voting rights in texas um this is a multi-day march against voter suppression, urging Congress to take action on voting rights, urging Congress to take action on voting rights. OK, so the march has completed. Uh, the, it, the march completed on I think it was Saturday. All right. Now, on Friday on Roland Martin Unfiltered, uh, Roland was broadcasting from the march once again and uh we discussed this on the panel we're going to go to clip i guess it's clip three i think it's clip three uh from roland martin and filtered uh but first you're going to hear a question that roland posed to um reverend william barber okay let's go to this clip so with this march here is drawing attention to the need for the uh for the people act is drawing attention to the need for uh to defeat the filibuster as well if we look at this piece here from if we look at this piece here from the huffington post um reverend william barber the third and former texas representative uh beta or war uh, launched a four-day 27 mile march in texas against voter suppression calling on congress to end the filibuster and pass uh, voting rights legislation. Uh, Reverend William Barber, co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign said at the press conference Tuesday, uh, the evening before people were set to start the multi-day march from Georgetown to Austin, Texas, Georgetown, Texas to Austin, Texas. Now, Reverend William Barber condemned Texas Republicans efforts to pass legislation restricting voting rights calling uh, such bills, the canary in the mine, and noting how Republicans in uh, state legislatures across the country are pushing hundreds of bills to suppress the vote. So right now we're dealing with 389 bills in uh, 48 state legislatures based upon the count from the uh, Brennan Center for Justice, okay, based upon the count from the Brennan Center for Justice. All right, now also uh, Associated Press has a piece here. Vote them out, Willie Nelson headlines protest rally. Vote them out, Willie Nelson headlines protest rally. Okay, and uh, let me try to pull this one up here also. Um, so this was at the end of the rally, okay? This was on Saturday, uh, July 31st. Uh, country music legend Willie Nelson led more than a thousand spectators in singing Vote Them Out, Vote Them Out. Uh, Saturday from the steps of the Texas Capitol during a rally wrapping up a four-day march in support of Democratic state legislators 
who voted uh, for Washington two weeks ago to block GOP backed uh, voting restrictions. OK, to block GOP backed voting restrictions. And let me pull up this article here from um, ABC News also. Uh, so Willie Nelson was like, I think, the only star that was there, or at least the only star of that caliber. And this caused people to ask the question, well, where are the celebrities? Celebrities spoke out last year uh, when we dealt with uh, the killing of George Floyd. And there were massive protests across the country. Celebrities were talking about it on social media, things like this. Well, you know, I, I said, you know, I, I use this analogy. People came out and, and I've said before, it's going to take mass protests all across the country, putting pressure on uh, corporations. Uh, but mass protests all across the country. We have to have a 50 state strategy. This cannot rest on the backs of African-Americans. This fight cannot rest on the backs of African-Americans. This is a 15th Amendment issue, but it's also a 19th Amendment issue. And the 19th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution in 1920 gave women the vote, specifically white women. And this is also a 26th Amendment issue, the 26th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Um lowered the minimum voting age from lowered the minimum voting age from uh, 21 to 18. And that was under uh, President Nixon, 1971. OK, so we're dealing with a 15th Amendment issue. Uh, we're dealing with a uh, 19th Amendment issue and we're dealing with a 26th Amendment issue. This impacts African-Americans, this impacts Latinos, Hispanics, this impacts everybody, okay? So this can't, th th this fight can't just fall on the uh, backs of African-Americans, all right? Uh, th th you have 38 million, um, this, uh, you have 38 million voters who are disabled Americans. This impacts them having to stand in longer lines negatively impacts uh, many people who are disabled, uh, reducing mail-in ballot boxes and the number of mail-in ballot boxes could, could uh, negatively impact people who are disabled, who can't make it to the uh, polls to vote. Okay. So uh, I just sent you that clip, uh, Jalen. So this hits different groups of people. Where are the Me Too activists? Where are the Me Too activists? All right. Where are the women's reproductive right activists? You talk about preserving abortion rights. You talk about women's reproductive rights. Well, that uh, largely impacts who's in your state legislature, the bills that are being passed, the governor who signs the bills into law. This deals with the Supreme Court, the federal court. All that comes from voting. All that deals with voting. Supreme Court justices are nominated by a president. OK, federal judges are nominated by a president and confirmed by the Senate. Supreme Court, federal judges confirmed by the Senate. So all this is tied to voting. So where are the Me Too women? Because we know and I'm not against Me Too women, but just a few weeks ago, they were yelling and screaming when Bill Cosby was released from prison. But now on voting rights issues that impact everybody, now they're silent. And one of the problems is that the voting rights issue is labeled a black thing. It's associated with the 1965 Voting Rights Act and it's labeled a black thing. And it gets associated with Dr. King and John Lewis and the Edmund Pettus Bridge and the movie Selma from Ava DuVernay. And that's those black people. That's that black people stuff. That's 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 for them. No, this impacts everybody. So one of the things that Reverend William Barber III and Beta O'Rourke are doing this is something that uh, i said has to be done is they are expanding this conversation to beyond just african americans and showing how this impacts everybody okay the 1.9 trillion dollar american rescue plan happened because 
African Americans went out and voted. Latinos went out and voted. Asian Americans went out and voted because no Republicans voted for the bill. Let's just be honest. No Republicans in the House of Representatives in the U.S. Senate voted for the American Rescue Plan. All right. The one point nine trillion dollar American Rescue Plan to fight coronavirus. None of them voted for the bill, even though it benefits their constituents. Mitch McConnell, Moscow, Mitch McConnell. Was in Kentucky just two or three weeks ago talking about how four billion dollars is coming to Kentucky because of the one point nine trillion dollar American Rescue Plan. And he admitted he didn't vote for the bill. He admitted he talked about the good that the bill is going to do for Kentucky. And then admitted he didn't vote for the bill. No Republicans in the House of Representatives of the U.S. Senate voted for the American Rescue Plan. And in that American Rescue Plan is also the uh, the uh, child tax credit. OK, that gives direct deposits to people's bank accounts that's going to uh, cut child poverty in half. Also, and there's the four billion dollars in debt relief for African-American farmers is being blocked because white farmers are jealous and they're suing. So it's, it's blocked by federal uh, uh, judges. But um, no Republican supported that. You had them calling it reparations like Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, even though he has six thousand African-American farmers in South Carolina. He's not doing anything for them. Um, so I want to go to this clip here. This is from uh, Roland Martin and filtered uh, Friday july 30th Roland was in texas at uh the march for democracy and he was talking to reverend william barber the third and after that we, he goes to the panel and i'm on the panel let's go to this clip Jalen. now folks at today's news conference at today's news conference uh i did ask reverend dr william barber with regards to this whole issue of the white house not meeting with texas house democrats what do you thought about that remember just yesterday we had representative collier representative sifonia thompson who told us that the white house was well, president joe biden had yet to meet with those 50 plus texas house democrats vice president kama harris has a couple times but not president joe biden listen to what reverend barber said in response to my question president biden ought to put him on air force one Flying to Texas, have a meeting on Air Force One to matter the, 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 uh, the, to uh, that's federal land, right? Huh? Yeah. There, the constables here to come on there and get them, and then have a rally with them, a meeting with them, and then go back with them to the well of the Congress, and have those those Texas legislators sitting right there in the front. He's got to because they have power, and he has more power than he's using. He's got more power. I, would, I'm, I had a chance before he was elected. I, I'll get to Reverend. I had more but before he was elected. I did a uh, Easter program with him on his podcast. And I said to him, what your family is, what you think, what your political consultant might be telling you is possible is going to fundamentally change through this pandemic. You check the record. I said this pandemic is going to open up pain and expose pain, poverty pain, race pain in a way that will give you an opportunity because you can see it. This fight for voting rights and the fact that the filibuster has already been used to block part of the COVID relief plan that would have lifted 32 million people. The people who got we had to go to work first, got sick first, got infected first and died first. And now it's threatening the democracy. I said to him, you will have your LGBT, L, L, Lyndon Baines Johnson, Kennedy Lincoln moment presented to you. I said this in March, Jesse. I don't know why the spirit said that. He wasn't even president. He wasn't even elected. I wasn't even, I hadn't even endorsed him. I said, but I believe if you get to be president, you're going to have a moment delivered to you. And the question is going to be, what do you do with that moment? Go to West Virginia, Mr. President. We love you enough to tell you this. Meet with those folks, those 79% of West Virginians that say Manchin is wrong. 81% of Democrats. Go to Arizona. Push cinema. Meet with the Latino community, the black community, the white community, the gay community. 
put those folk on a plane, come to Texas, have a meeting right out here on the, in the airport, fly them right back, and when you go back, already have Pelosi and Schumer inviting you to the well of the Congress. And I guarantee you, if you take this to the well of the Congress, it will well up a sentiment of resurrection and transformation in this country, and you will be able to do more than you even think you can do now. But you got to get the leadership. All right, folks, let's go to my panel. Uh, joining me right now is uh, Dania Joseph. She's an immigrants' rights activist. Uh, glad to have her on the show, Brittany Lee Lewis. Uh, she is a political analyst. Uh, and Michael M. Hotep, host of the African History Network. All right, Ms. Joseph, I've been trying to get you on the show for quite some time. We finally got you on our panel. Glad to have you here. Uh, let's talk about that that last point I, I raised. Uh, let's just say um, after the news conference, literally right after, uh, a phone call uh, came into Reverend Jackson's cell phone from the White House. Uh, and uh, they were, uh, I want to say they were happy to hear what Reverend Barber described in terms of the pressure putting on, but uh, they clearly were listening and got the message. And you're seeing that now. You're seeing uh, Senator Chuck Schumer say that uh, he may not allow them to go on recess. He may keep them in to vote on this bill. The external pressure that is being brought to bear is working because it is forcing these Democrats to reckon with the unrest in the streets on the issue of voting. Right. Absolutely. And I think it's time. You know, this idea that there isn't more that could be done is preposterous, right? We are living in 2021. We're not living in the 1950s and the 1960s of the civil rights movement. And so this idea that the Biden administration couldn't meet, I mean, yes, you mentioned Vice President Kamala Harris did, but this idea that the president couldn't, why is that, right? This is one of the quintessential issues that is impacting us in this country today. Voter suppression is real. This idea that black and brown and indigenous people, communities of color that have been historically disenfranchised are currently under attack again because we've always been. So why not find the time? Why must we take, you know, take into the streets, right? Take into the streets is always a good idea. Dr. King said writing is the voice of the oppressed, right? When we are oppressed and feel as though there's no other channels, that's what we do. We take to the streets. But I feel like it should have even gotten to that point. Voter suppression is a real issue that's impacting us in 2021, not just in Texas, but in Georgia and other states across the nation. This should have been one of the administration's first things that they did on day one, because during the campaign cycle, we saw a host of promises that was being made time and time again. We saw John Lewis's name, may he rest in peace, being uplifted over and over again by individuals who otherwise wouldn't have supported his life's work and much of the things that he fought for in regards to voting rights. And so when you hear Reverend Barber say that, right, he literally said that, that there's individuals who are invoking the name of Dr. King, Ralph Abernathy, John Lewis. Um, you know, we have different people that are being uplifted, but yet you don't want to keep their legacies alive, right? It's time that the president meets with these individuals who are on the ground, whether that be Paul politicians, activists and organizers, or just invested Americans who do not want to see their right to vote be infringed upon. That meeting should have happened yesterday. The thing here, Michael, that uh, is, is, is quite interesting um, is President Biden has not called uh, these holdout Democratic senators to the White House to specifically talk about voting. Will the people act? John Lewis Act. They keep talking about also this John Lewis Voting Act. The problem is it hasn't been written. Right. So what the hell are we talking about if we don't even know what, what, what is in it? And so essentially what Democrats are doing is they're negotiating against themselves on this uh, For the People Act vote. We're hearing that now they're talking about remove the dark money provisions uh, out of the bill and some things along those lines. What Barbara and others are saying is, no, you fight for every single element that's in the bill, and if you have to give up something, you do it at the at the absolute last minute. You don't do it at the beginning of a, a conversation. Yeah, you know, uh, so so they're they're 
different aspects of this, and there's a, there's a time element also, because you have um, the in September, we know that the federal budget runs out. You're going to have a debate over the debt ceiling. We know that uh, August recess is coming up. Now, Schumer is signaling that he uh, may suspend the August recess, which I think he should. Uh, at the same time, we know that the House goes on recess, uh, I think is I think it, either today or next week, something like the House goes on recess. So you have all these different dynamics. Um, if you have to remove the dark money provisions and things like that to get the bill passed, then come you get that bill passed now and then come back and get those other parts later. Uh, you, you know, this... This is really, you have a lot of moving pieces, and this is really complicated. And one of the things that the this march is doing is shedding, like, because I've been covering this march. I've been talking about it for the past two days on my show as well, and my people know about it also. Um, mainstream media is starting to talk about it more. I saw more coverage yesterday. Um, but one thing that I see still missing, and we've talked about that here on this show, Roland, one, one element that's a powerful element that I still see that's missing is corporations are still very silent on what's taking place. I agree with what you're talking about and pressure on um, Biden and Biden should step up more and things like this. And uh, Biden has uh, signaled that he supports uh, a standing filibuster as opposed to the filibuster now, all that. But um, I see that corporations are still very silent. Also, um, I see... Uh, with this movement here in the Poor People's Campaign, and, and, and to me, Reverend William Barber is a modern-day Dr. King. Uh, I see them expanding the conversation to beyond just African Americans. This is something that we've talked about here, and it, because this impacts everybody, college students, the elderly, there are 38 million disabled Americans who are registered to vote. They're going to be impacted by this. This impacts Lat Latinos, Asian Americans, Native Americans, LGBTQ. Uh, I'm wondering where the Me Too women are. No offense to any Me Too women, the white Me Too women especially. They were very vocal a couple of few weeks ago when Bill Cosby got out of prison, but they're very silent now. This All right, everybody. we're going to pause it right so, there. Uh, all right, pause it right there. I hate to pause it on myself. <laughs> we'll probably share that clip uh, on Monday's show as well. All right, um, so those watching on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network, and my YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotel, keep watching. Uh, we keep going for a couple more minutes. Um, you can uh, uh, visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Uh, register for my online course as well. Remember, right now is correct wrong behavior. is not over till we win. We're kind of forever, and we'll talk to you tomorrow night. Peace. All right. Okay, let me end this call here. All right, everybody. Okay, so that was from uh, Friday, July 30th. Uh, Roland Martin and filtered. I'm going to post the uh, link here to the clip. You can uh, check out the full show. And uh, you can follow Roland on YouTube, Roland uh, Martin on YouTube and Roland Martin on uh, uh, Facebook. All right. And then also, if you like this type of information, uh, you can support the African History Network. We definitely need your support. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, and um, at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Okay, this helps us keep broadcasting six days a week because I don't get paid to do radio at all. This helps us keep broadcasting six days a week, keep doing the research, stay on the air, um, finance the show. Uh, also, also, if you want to advertise with the African History Network, um, email us at AHN show at African history network.com AHN show at African history network.com. Uh, if you want to advertise with the African history network, um, uh, as well, we, we will, um, we rebroadcast the shows, your 32nd and 62nd commercial, uh, will air. Okay. And we're also on uh, 10 different audio podcast platforms. We're on um, FM Player, TuneIn, uh, iTunes, CastBox, uh, Stitcher. And so your audio commercial will air during those um, 
uh, doing the audio podcast. OK, uh, if you don't have a commercial, we can create one for you. No additional charge. Our current promotion is buy one month, get two months free, buy one month, get two months free. OK. So uh, email us at AHN show at 